Hey everyone, welcome back to a part two series of this building a Minecraft server system slash company or whatever you want to call it. So I want to show you a new feature I added. Um, it's not too difficult to explain. So what we have here is when you create a server and you go to it, I'm giving the ability for users to basically configure some of the, the Minecraft properties. Okay. So what happens is when you actually have a Minecraft server running, there is a server.properties file. Let's see if I can find that for you all. So right here is an example. And this properties has a, a bunch of key value pairs that you can kind of modify as you need to. And what I added is in React, this UI basically fetches the configuration from the agent itself. So if you remember, we have the a API server is running. And then on another machine, we have the agent, which is hosting the Minecraft server and has that server.properties file. It might make more sense to have like a draw IO going. Let me go there. All right, so let me show this with like a draw IO. So basically when you connect to the UI, this UI is talking to both the API and when you actually click on like viewing an individual server, it will actually connect to the server that's hosting your Minecraft stuff. So this one is the agent. And I, let me kind of zoom in. So this agent has a Minecraft server running in a Docker container. So let me just go ahead and kind of demonstrate that. Hopefully this text isn't too small and you all can kind of read this, but the diagram is going to get a little, a little messy. But let's just go ahead and do this. Make a better diagram in a bit, but all right, so that's like a high level overview of like how this whole system is set up. We have a React app, which is this UI here. The user connects to it. And when they go to their actual server, this connects to the agent over here. So this agent is hosting a Minecraft server that has a servers.properties file, like I kind of showed you. And there's also an API running on this agent. So I'm going to say uh, there's a smaller API here. Now, I don't know if this is the best design. I haven't really thought too hard about it. But in this new feature that I added where you can actually update configuration and server properties, you'll see down here when we hit this tab, it hits a configuration endpoint. If you look at the URL down here, let me zoom in, it might be a little small. When you hit this endpoint, you'll see that it's hitting 10.0.0.166, which happens to be the IP address of my agent server, which is this red box. Um, let me just do this. So we know this API is just running on localhost right now. All right, so we're hitting the agent and we're saying, hey, give me the configuration. What the agent is doing, if I show you some of this agent code, really sloppy code right now, but what it does is I have a express application running on the agent itself as well, which has an endpoint called get configuration. And when you hit this endpoint, all it does is it reads that server properties file and sends it back to you. Okay, so super simple API endpoint. And there's also another endpoint for overriding that properties file. So basically you can send in some raw text and it's going to take that and just overwrite that server's properties file. So if I show you the network request, if I go over here and look at the preview, the response, you'll see that there is just a bunch of text which happens to map one to one with that server.properties file. And in React, what we do is, maybe I can show you the code too, is we convert this like key value file to JSON. So let me go to the app. Um, I'm going to go to the configure page. All right, let me go up here to the logic here. So when the configure tab loads, all we're doing is get the server configuration and then we kind of loop over and split up that text with like split where there's new lines and split where there's equal signs. And we just basically create an object that has all those key value pairs converted to an object and vice versa. Before we save the configuration, we do the, the reverse, right? We loop over the object and we create some text of all the key value pairs. So when I actually make some changes, let's say I wanted to do like um, change my world to world awesome and I go down here and I save it. That is going to do a post request to the agent and send over all of that data in the same format. But the main difference is that we've changed the world level name to world awesome. The backend gets that request and kind of updates that server file. So if I were to show you that, let me just go ahead and stop the agent real quick and go into the servers slash, what is it called? This server is 021. If I go here and look at that server.properties file, you'll see that we have world awesome persisted. 
So now the user basically has the ability to change whatever configuration they want and they can save it. And after they they're done like configuring their server, they probably need to go back and actually do a manual restart here because the server doesn't actually propagate those changes into here restart it. So that's something that we'll have to do. I just stopped my agent, so that's not going to work. And then for how all these input boxes are created, I'm just looping over the key value pairs of the JavaScript object and just creating an input box that points to that key value pair and basically just updates an object behind the scenes. So it's pretty straightforward. It's not the best because some of these things I want to actually make drop downs like difficulty. This should probably be a drop down with four options because you have like easy, normal, hard. Um, and I think there's like another one, but yeah, this is what I have so far as a feature I added. I wanted to share with you all. Hopefully you guys uh, learn a little bit from it. Um, also, I might make this code open source. I don't, I'm not too certain that this is actually going to like blow it, become anything that I can make money off of. So I might just make it open source and anyone can contribute to it if they want to. The second thing I'm trying to work on is I kind of refactored the logic of how the Docker containers or Minecraft servers are hosted. Before I had the agent just polling every five seconds for its configuration. And then if a server were to start or stop um, based on a flag in the database, I would basically run Docker commands to stop or start the server. Um, the only issue with that is that like you're hitting the API every five seconds, which is a lot of requests. So I'm trying to refactor it. They have the API itself um, or have the UI dr directly connect to the agent to send it commands. So like stopping and starting and restarting so that I, I don't have to deal with the database. I can just kind of invoke commands directly on the server itself. Um, but there is a little issue with that. I can't figure out a way to get the terminal sending commands the way I refactored it because now I'm letting Docker kind of take care of the life cycle of the container before the agent would take care of the life cycle. But now Docker, I'm just doing like, I think there's like a, let's see, start server. Just to kind of show you this, I added a flag to the Docker run command that says restart unless stopped. So if for whatever reason the machine itself were to turn off and turn back on, Docker would persist the state of the running containers and just restart them. I think it makes more sense to have Docker manage the servers than to have this agent have to run query for the database configuration and start the server. I think it's better to just have this managed by Docker since I think they probably would do a better job than me myself. So that's what I added, but when I added that, it's very hard to actually like send a command to this Docker instance. Um, I can't figure out a way to bind to the standard in of the terminal of Docker. So I'm trying to figure that out. But that is the next step. I just want to do some refactoring here to make sure that when someone tries to send a command in the terminal, it actually works because I actually broke this doing some refactoring. So that's kind of the next steps. And then I just want to make sure that um, everything works well. So if you enjoyed watching this little overview vlog number two of this series, give me a thumbs up. Also give me a also leave a comment below if you have another feature that you think I should work on. And like always, if you're new to this series or channel, be sure to click the subscribe button if you find this content interesting and you're learning something from it. So I don't really have too much planned in this video. I just wanted to show you a quick feature. So have a good day and happy coding.